We're joined now by McKinney North Bulldog head basketball coach, Daryl Kraft. Coach, welcome back to Sports Talk. Thanks for having me. Well, it's good to have you back here. Uh, as you look forward to this season, you ended last season in the regional semifinals against Kimball. I mean, it's a terrific season. We'd like to have gone a little bit further, but still a great season. What were you thinking that you needed to do for this season? Well, with, with us having so many kids back from last year's group, we need to make sure they, they stayed focused. I, I, I kind of told our kids, you know, last year we were the ones who were going out and kind of under the radar and trying to beat those guys that were ranked and ahead of us. And, and this year we're going to have the bullseye on us. And it, it's a little bit different. You know, a little bit more pressure that goes into that and expectations are a little bit higher. And so we needed to make sure that our kids understood that. And every time that you step on the floor, you're going to get your opponent's best shot now. Now, as you were coming into this year, who were the people that you were expecting to contribute that were coming back? We had a lot of them, to be honest with you. We had uh, Jola Otabu, who's our starting point guard for the past three years. Julian Perry, who's been in our squad for the past four years. It started, you know, he played a lot as a freshman. Uh, Steele Douglas gave us tremendous minutes. We had a move in um, from Berkner, who's going to give us a lot of minutes. Probably our best shooters ever came through, McKinney North and Colin Curran. Uh, we just had a lot of guys that with a lot of experience that we felt can, can, can do the job on the offensive end. So the biggest thing is make sure that we stay focused also on the, on the defensive end. Now, as a coach, how do you balance that? I mean, I heard a lot of names with a lot of minutes. I mean, have they expanded the number of minutes in a game? <laughs> kind of funny you say that. Uh, we sat down before the season ever started, and uh, I had the kids write down the number of minutes that they felt uh, would make them, plus uh, some people at the house, happy. <laughs> and uh, I gave them, I had them give them to my assistant coach, and when they gave him to my assistant coach. He wrote, he's, he read out loud how many minutes there were per kid. And we were on the board with my other assistant coach, and we added it up, and it came up to be like, I don't know, 200 and some minutes. Oh, my. And there's only 160 minutes, uh, 32 minutes per game for five players. So there's only 160 minutes you can give them. And I think it was like 266. So it was almost over 100 minutes more than what right. we can do. So I told the kid, I said, you see a problem here. I said, so this is your pre-AP work. You come back with a solution. And they always like, Coach, we, you, there's no solution for that. And so I wanted to make sure that they understood that there's just really no way to keep everyone happy. And the bottom line is, is my job is to do everything I can to make sure that I play the kids that are going to give us the best chance to win those that many minutes and go from there. Yeah, because the thing that's going to make them happiest in the long run is winning games. That's what it should be for sure. Right. Well, that's what you're thinking. Um, as you started uh, your pre-district schedule this year, um, what were you really hoping to achieve from the first three or four games? Was it continuity, chemistry, although it would seem like you should have chemistry, but what were you really working on? Well, to be honest with you, what, what I was trying to work on is to, to get the ro a rotation down. With, with having so many players back that you kind of knew what they were going to give you, it would be great to have some depth on the bench through your sixth through tenth man and, and see how that goes. Well, to be honest with you, uh, that didn't work out that way because we have not played a game yet in the 10 games that we have played. We have not played a game yet where we had all of our players for, this, for the entire game uh, due to injury. So hopefully tomorrow night uh, against Lovejoy will be our first game that we actually have our entire team together. But that's what I was trying to accomplish. I wanted to try to uh, give minutes and find a rotation for those kids who are kind of new to our program, whether it be move in, we got a freshman, we got some kids off the JV team, along with uh, a lot of kids coming back from last year's varsity team. Well, and in an odd way, it's kind of helped you balance the minutes out a little. It has, exactly. If they're not dressed not to go play, that's, that's one less kid you have to worry about trying to find him some minutes. Well, did, uh, as, were you shooting to have tougher competition this year in your non-district games? Or are you thinking your district's plenty of competition that uh, you just need to make sure you get the chemistry and the rotation down? What were you looking for, like your tournament that you went to? That's a good question. You know, every year, like, I try to have a very good non-district schedule because of the fact we want that to help us in our, in our district schedule. This year, I try to do everything I can to make it even more difficult for our kids because we felt we had a chance to be pretty good. So we, we've gone to a Keller tournament. We were scheduled to go to the Prosper tournament that was canceled because of the weather. And now we're also in, at the winter break, Christmas break, we're going to go to the Dallas ISD Coca-Cola tournament, which is as good as you can get around this area. So we want to make sure we can do everything we can to prepare us for our district play. And then if we're fortunate enough to, to make it to the playoffs, to also get ready for the, for the uh, playoffs. Well, so far, who are the people that have really just stood out for you that have contributed? I know you've had to balance and juggle with injuries and stuff. But uh, uh, who's really stood out most consistently? I'd probably have to, say you have to go with Julian uh, Perry. He's a four-year varsity player for us. Uh, 
every game he gives you about the same thing. But again, it's really hard to say because with the number of people on the offensive end that can score for us, you know, Rashard Jackson's played great. He's been moving. I was talking about earlier from Berkner, Joel Otobu, who's our starting point guard, has played great. Colin Kern shot the ball well. Uh, you know, so so with that being said, we we probably had a different person lead us in scoring. Probably out of the ten games, probably sixty percent of the time. So you know, it's really difficult to say one kid. I, I'm, I'm pleased with how we started the season. Now, last week we had a pretty rough uh, a pretty rough week. We lost two games. We were seven and one going into last week, and then. We didn't get to play from Thanksgiving. That Tuesday was our last game, so we didn't get to, we didn't practice a lot over Thanksgiving break, thinking that we didn't have a game for a while. And then we came back and we had uh, another time off because of the weather. So we were off for basically almost two full weeks without a game. And also with uh, you know four or five of those days, we didn't get to practice because of the weather. So last week was pretty difficult on us. We didn't shoot the ball very well. Uh, Prosper and Frisco both got us. Uh, so hopefully tomorrow night we're looking to shoot the ball a little bit better and get back on the winning track. Now you mentioned tomorrow night, uh, Lovejoy, right? Yes, sir. Uh, and is that the start of district play? Yes, sir. So you're going to open up district play with Lovejoy? Yeah, and you know Lovejoy is a uh, a team that has won their district the last four years. Uh, they won last year. I think they were 13 and one, and uh, extremely well coached. They have a point guard who's going to go to the University of Rice, uh, Jordan Reed. A very good ball player. They have another kid that can flat out shoot her from outside uh, at any time he gets any kind of look. And uh, defensively, they're as good as uh, anybody that I've ever faced in my 10 years of being a varsity basketball coach. Kyle Harriman does a great job with them, and uh, they're very stingy, so it'll probably be a lower, lower scoring game than, than what we would like to play. Uh, and so it'll be a very, very tough contest tomorrow. And then Friday, we play Wiley, who is probably. Uh, another one of the three teams that are probably picked to have a chance to win district, and, and we get to play both of them, including ourselves, you know, as a third team. So it'll, it'll be a, a very important week for us coming up. All right, and tell us where those games are. So Tuesday night. Tuesday night at 8 o'clock at home. The at 17th McKinney North. at home, McKinney North versus Lovejoy. Yes, sir. And, and then, then Friday the 20th. At Wiley. At Wiley. 8 o'clock. And now give us a quick recap after the Christmas break, which comes up next week. Uh, what, what are you guys doing? You said something, I think, the Dallas ISD tournament. Yes. When does that start? It starts on the 26th, the very next day uh, that we can actually participate. So we'll come back five days off, no practice. And, uh, and again, you know, the ISD Coca-Cola tournament, you have the best schools in, in, in the area, Lincoln, Sock, Kimball, Madison. You know, we start off with Woodrow Wilson, who's the team that knocked us out of the playoffs three years ago, I believe it was. I mean, they're, they're a very good basketball team. So it'll be a very, very tough road to, to get through that tournament. But again, that's the reason why we scheduled them, because we want to play against some of the best competitions. So hopefully, if we make it into the playoffs and we can go a couple rounds deep, that this will prepare us. Now, how soon after the Christmas break do you start up district play again? We start, I think it's January the 3rd. It's that following Tuesday, the very first Tuesday back after uh, in 2014, and we play Greenville at home. So. Right back at it again. Right, you don't even get a break. I no. guess. I guess they'd say, "Well, you had a break when the weather was bad." That's true. That That's is your true. Break because you're not going to get one. Uh, hopefully for a really long time. That, State tournament. I hope. That would sound good to me. Now, quickly, we have just a couple seconds left. But uh, any thoughts on the realignment? You know, I really don't even look at that. I, I, I'm happy uh, for Coach Watson and, and, and all the coaches at McKinney High uh, because they'll be coming down to 5A, the new 5A, the old 4A. Right. And so we'll, we'll get to reunite that rivalry. And, and to be honest with you, that's something I've missed. Uh, with Boyd and McKinney High both being the 5A now and us being a 4A, we didn't get that opportunity to play them. And I just think it's good for our basketball program. It's good, good for the community to have that rivalry. And you know, McKinney High and Boyd was able to do that this year in all their sports uh, because they're in the same district. And so that's, that's one of the things I do look forward to that, that I know is going to happen is that McKinney High and McKinney North will be in the same district. And, and I think that's good for our kids and our community to be able to get that rivalry again with, uh, with the very talented McKinney High School. All right. Well, Coach, once again, thank you for being here. Uh, so don't forget, Tuesday the 17th, McKinney North Boys Basketball at home against Lovejoy. And it's a, what, 7.30 tip-off? o'clock. All district games are 8 o'clock for 8 o'clock. All right. And then Friday at uh, Wiley. And that's Daryl Kraft of the McKinney North Bulldogs. That's our show for today. Be sure to check in next time and we'll take a look at McKinney ISD girls basketball. And thanks to everyone who helped create today's show. And remember, if it's McKinney ISD athletics, it's on Sports Talk.